Welcome everyone to Soul Labs podcast. My name is Kelly Nazant, and I'm here with Catherine Weiss. And we're talking today about the water realm. And as you get to know Catherine and get to hear her story and who she is, you'll understand fully why I'm so excited to have her for this part of the journey, for this element of water. So as you know, we have three elements of water, three phases of water, the first phase being what nurtures us and then what's at home for us. And the second phase is going deeper into what uh, is deep within that needs transformation, that needs change, that needs to be released and let go. It's the gauntlet to get to the final phase of water, which is diving into that deep Gaian wisdom, that connection with Mother Earth, with Panchamama, with that deeper wisdom that we are all a part of, that brings us back to one consciousness, one being, human beings. So welcome, Catherine Weiss, to Soul Labs podcast. Thank you for joining us. Ah, oh, thank you, Kelly. It's it's such a it's such a pleasure to to as as being someone who has developed water, <laughs> <laughs> being now after this fifteen year process, uh, being interviewed as a possible expert of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how does that feel? Good, Good water question. Yeah. How does that feel? It actually does feel that my middle name, which is Monica, wants to be mentioned as well. Uh, because oh, uh, that's a result of. Um, of kind of like what needs to be transformed uh, in the water two round. Uh, oh, it, wow. it, it came clear um, <clears throat> that it's Katrin Monica Wies. It's my full name. So, yep. Yeah, and I'm, I'm Swiss. Uh, so I, I was a very airy person and very earthy person. And, um, and the fire and the water have been key development areas for me. So it feels great. I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, Having got, uh, getting to know you has been an incredible adventure for me uh, for personal and for reasons. Catherine and I met at uh, Robert Dilt's uh, NLP training around heart-centered leadership, again, very appropriate for heart, the water realm. And in meeting Catherine, and, and as I know everyone that knows Catherine knows this about her, she has this extraordinary presence. And yes, the air realm definitely reigns highly. I, you, you present as being uh, very conscious and very um, connected and mindful and intelligent and, and, and centered in all the earth realm stuff of being very grounded and rooted and capable. In fact, that's what uh, most people I'm, I'm assuming have come to you, uh, to you for in the past, and your profession and otherwise. Yet, we see this amazing depth of water and certainly of fire. But as we focus on this water element, um, you know it's extraordinary to see that, and it's an, it's heartening to see that someone like yourself has had that call to adventure to develop such uh, shamanic depth, uh, emotional depth, and this connection. And, you know, you, in many, in all ways, I see uh, you as this incredible model for what is possible when we do develop all of the elements. Ah. Uh. If you would see me, I have tears in my eyes, which is a result of the of the water, uh, water mm. process. Um, what the, what are the tears about for you? The the tears are about the deep resonance for the longing uh, that I was having when I came in two thousand and three to the dramatic point of a realization that my life cannot go on like it was. And in 2003, there was this, all of a sudden, my joy of life was gone. And I started to figure out what it was that, that really aspired me to go the path. Uh, you know, as a, I started off as a healer in a, in a different area, which is um, I have uh, 
a master degree in pharmaceutical science and I was uh, working in drugstores and I was working in the pharmaceutical industry for the health of people. But uh, the ego uh, was, was taking everything that was possible and interesting and I ended up traveling the world and I lost, I lost the connection to the true self. And that was a turnaround point. So the tears uh, that are coming now in 2018 is the tears of joy and resonance with, with having been able and having had the courage to walk the path. Yeah. Courage you have. <laughs> was it, um, you know, I'm sure uh, others are, have this question. Was there something that happened in 2008? three that uh, that started this or was it more of a, a gradual internal experience That's, uh, in, in 2003 um, as I said I didn't have the joy of life anymore and, and you hear it in my voice um, it's yeah. still uh, not an easy experience to talk about. Um, I came to the, the conclusion that I didn't want to live anymore. And um, so I seeked possibility to end my life. Um, I wasn't successful. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and I share that story in the first chapter of, of the book that I have been tasked in writing last year, uh, that there to trust spirits at work. So that incident left me to, to say, whoa, I cannot go on like this anymore. And for the first time in my life, I seeked uh, deliberate support from a physician and the physician said, uh, you need to stop working for some time. You, I, 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 write, I write you, uh, uh, I, I tell the company that you cannot go back to work for some time. I said, no, 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 I can't, I can't, I need to do. I said, yeah, 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 but you need to do, take care of yourself now. Not the patients, not the clients, but the customer. Uh -huh. And I, I, took a day, I, took, I took off uh, for two, three weeks. And one morning I, I woke up and there was a sign that I need to take time for myself. And that was my first re-experience of spiritual intervention in my life. And I'm saying re-experience because I was having experience in the, as a child, but I stopped noticing them because I was afraid. So there in September 2003, I got a sign from spirits that I have to take time for myself to heal, to understand. Yeah. To come back home to something yes. nurturing yeah. and real for you. Mm -hmm. It's amazing because I see, you know, as, as I do with this model, that that whole Icarus-like fire realm is so passionate and so amazing. And, it, and it, it's preceded by that airy realm of intellectual um, capabilities of being so, you know, in this wonderful you, you know, it ascends to this ivory tower of knowing and we get to this place where we really feel like we've got it and we're command of our lives and we're really on that track and we're really creating and then the burnout <laughs> and, then yes. the, and then the dive into the waters. Yeah. And, you know, it seems, it seems to be the central uh, motif, the central um, uh, rite of passage to enter into uh, that deeper state of uh, what well, you and I understand well as uh, uh, that shamanic um, uh, ability, that shamanic uh, medicine that we have to go through uh, this phase. And yet the challenge that we see with our clients quite often in that phase is this um, I don't want to call it unwillingness, but this challenge to go beneath the surface and to go deeper into that that emotional realm because of the emotion set, the and even deeper the darkness that they're scared of seeing in themselves. 
how did you, was there something definitive or was it just a process for you that allowed you to, to move through that process or was it just a matter of not having any other option? Both. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> I remember that um, I came I came to terms to hand in my uh, letter of notification uh, leaving my job, which was a very perfect job for me at that time. Um, and <clears throat> I needed to take time for myself. And one of the most immediate things that I have done is I have not, I was not wearing a watch anymore. I was not having an electronic agenda anymore. Mm. I switched to paper agenda. And <clears throat> in that time of taking care of myself, I was not allowing myself to make any plans because as soon as I started to make a plan, I felt stressed. And all it needed was to, to, to be and to get into the, the human being of Katrin and not the human doing or the human thinking. It, I, I needed to go back to, to listen and what I started and what really, really helped is I, I started going to the fitness center and I'm not a fitness center person. So I, I, was, I was doing stretching i was doing walking in nature i was doing pilates and through experiencing my body and being able to ask the question what does feel right today to do not what i have to do or what i should do or what other people think i should do and this was exactly the, the key challenge um i remember that in that time i quit I, I was having a reunion of my pharmaceutical um, degree. We were, we were people, 25 people that met, and they were saying, hey, Katrin, what are you working? I said, oh, I'm currently not working. Ah, then you must have a family and children. I said, no. Hmm. Oh, then you're married. I said, no. So what do you do? I said, I take care of myself. And by that statement, most of the conversation stopped because the people didn't know what to talk with me <laughs> because taking care of yourself, what an odd concept in Switzerland in, in 2003, you know, 2004, having the luxury of not working, but not because you have to do something else, but because you want to take care of yourself. So I was pretty much an outsider for people that have been in that corporate life and that, it's one thing that I realize makes it very difficult for the clients who want to take the jump is what is the social network thinking? What are the other thinkers? What is the family thinking? And my body was devastated. I was not having the resource to work anymore. Um, and when I look back from what I have been able to work as a capacity, how many hours, how complex to what I'm able now to work, I'm now may more able to go deep, but I cannot make as many hours anymore. It's a different, it has shifted. And to some degree, you need to come to terms with that. You know, when the elastic band of your life has broken like mine, you fix it again, but it's, it's not as elastic anymore. You need to be way more cautious and patient with yourself. And that was a key learning. And does this feel more true to you or does it feel alien to you this this different pace if you engage me in a in a new endeavor and the icarus comes and wants to fly high <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. i i am i am triggered to fly high again but within a few weeks i realize it's not possible so what does that mean? Does that mean that, um, you, you know, and I'm saying this because I, uh, I've, I've experienced something very similar where I had to recalibrate my own fire horse nature of, of uh, you know, all out, um, almost, I wouldn't call it manic, but it's certainly determined 
um, pushing through no matter what uh, the cost, because I, at the time I could handle it. But then when I realized that I, my, my being would no longer tolerate my uh, fieriness, I had to begin to learn. It's like rehabilitation, like if it were physical rehab, right? Mm-hmm. So how you do know, you do that? In, in one, in that you have different ways of describing the three phases of water. One is absorb for water one, transform water two, and flow in water three. Mm. Or you say, explore your center in water one, discover your inner truth in water two, and uh, enter state of flow in water, water three. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you said at the beginning is nurture, finding out what's nurturing you in water one, go deeper what it is in water two, and, 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 and bringing it to mother earth in water three. Mm-hmm. So, because I was a pre- because of my conscious decision as a child to not feel anymore because I felt the interaction with the spirit and that scared me. Um, How old were you? Um, I, I was. Um, I stopped inter. I stopped blocking around age eight. Wow. Bef- before that, I was. Uh, I, I, say, I, sh- I shared it here with friends, you know, when there was a thunderstorm outside, I was running in the garden and I was ha- a little child and <laughs> I'm welcoming, I'm welcoming the rain and, and the wind. I love the wind. I love the rain. And I, uh, when I was uh, going to bed at night, I felt touches. Uh, no one was there. And I didn't know that what I know now that those are contacts I heard and I knew things and everyone always said, but how I, I, I was kind of like, I was having clairvoyant moments and no one in my family or system could understand. So I, I told myself that's not what you should do. So I stopped feeling, which was, I was very good in getting analytical and detached from things. And the more you detached you are from things, the more you can do. You know, if there is no emotion about, for instance, firing a person, you can fire a person in five minutes, kind of, hello, this is the situation, this is the consequence, this is the package you get. But if you are absorbed in the emotions of that act, it takes way longer. And this is the key transformation that happened because I am opening myself to absorb and receive all there is within everything, the capacity is limited of the amount of things, but there is like an in-depth capacity of the depth of things, you know? Absolutely. Wouldn't you say that that's um, something culturally speaking that uh, we're missing that is needed, this sense of, um, emotional connection of conscious connection of human connection beyond the roles we play beyond the the airy intellectual and the earthy embodiment and organized and on on schedule and on target and even the fiery realm of, of spiritual uh, activity the water what I love about it the most and I, and I definitely have an affinity for this arena for my entire life is that it really asks us to go deep and and be willing to be to hold a space um, of love, uh, as Martin Buber says, God's more between us than within us, and it takes that emotional uh, intelligence, those mirror neurons, that empathy, that empathic nature, to allow for that wisdom to guide us in all the other elements. Yes, and exactly that, uh, that wisdom, uh, if you have not explored it, you need to build it. It's kind of like I was at that age, uh, 35 years old, and I needed to learn to feel, to allow feelings. And I have so much gathered to, dis- to close that avenue, that opening that avenue. And sometimes I was overwhelmed, and that was the reason uh, that I'm so so happy when I found that picture um, of that airbird that is diving into the water because that's how I felt. I felt 
totally overwhelmed by what I'm feeling, sensing, grasping. And I needed to develop that emotional intelligence, that compassion and grace are something that is not just there, but needs to be learned how to express. Uh, also to not, not, it sounds now a little bit stupid, but not to burn out because of your empathic competence. Um, of not burning out because you're feeling everyone's sorrow and all of a sudden want to heal everyone. You know, that was at one time point. <laughs> I felt like I need to heal the world and for God's sake, that's an impossible task. So you need to develop that capacity to deal with your emotions, with your emotional nature by consciously learning it. At, at least that's what I needed to do. And those people who are very good in water, they consciously need to take a decision to go into the other realms, you know? So um, it's, it's, I use the concept of the four elements um, of water, air, earth, uh, and fire also uh, in the, in hand analysis, uh, you know, um, we have, we, and, and the emotional people are the born psychotherapists, uh, but they also need to have boundaries. And uh, I'm, I have not that much water in my hand. And by the way, I have no water in my astrological birth, uh, birth chart. So I needed to work on that. <laughs> I, need, <laughs> I needed to get all my intelligence to master water. Absolutely. I, you know, as I look at, um, you know, what we're endeavoring to do with Solab, the concept is really about... Uh, two things, well, there's many things, but two primary things. One is being able to find the balance of all the elements within our own nature. And in a, in a certain sense, that is a new calling. Uh, we have for a long time uh, been allowed or even encouraged to be specialists in an element, whether you know, we're a spiritual being or an emotionally grounded being or, you know, emotionally based being or a very grounded earthy being or a very intellectual being, at least we can be identified by that sort of monotheism of being, you know, we, they know who you are, but there, I think we're suffering the polarization of that at this point from Carl Jung's work, the air and the water are, is the thinking and the emotional bodies. And they, they're seen as diametrically opposed. Yet as I see your bird, your head's down into the water and the feet are firmly connected to the air. Mm -hmm. And I think there is something vital in being able to hold that polarity, um, especially where it's so clear that there is this polarity. Um, you know, we have those that are very tuned into the water realm and this is their sweet spot, if you will. Mm -hmm. And yet, as you're saying, one of the big challenges is that uh, they may not be very grounded or organized in the earth realm. They may, may not be very, um, you know, mindfully attached to relationships and conscious of, of all that stuff. Uh, but yet they have very much the right hemispheric fire and water uh, going for them. When we, the second part of this is when we come together in mutual regard and say, I see your abilities, I see your, your preferences, and I see the gifts that you bring to the world. And not only do I encourage you to become more holistic in your own nature, but I invite you to support those that need your wisdom in an area that they're not as fluid in or not as conscious of to be able to reach across the element to them and say, look, here's how to be more mindful. Here's how to be more, have better boundaries or be better organized. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I want to come back to um, the experience. So I see the water um, really more as the experience. And one thing that I, uh, was able to do was spending time in the last few weeks with elders of the Lakota tribe, Lakota Sioux tribe in South Dakota and Nebraska. And we have been camping. And one of the realizations I came through is that up to today, uh, 
the Native Americans that I met have been able to stay in touch with the spirits and they are taking time. And um, they share something and then they make a pause. And then we Westerners think, ah, it's our time to jump. But no, we have to wait until they say like, that's all I have to share at the moment or want to share. And then, you know, it's finished, mm -hmm. but it takes time until it comes and it, it, it is in a rhythm. And when you are uh, more in sync with the nature, that the more you, you also slow down. That's maybe p things uh, when people are walking in the woods or, if they are at the beach with nature, their, their less words are needed over time, the mm. more you are in nature. And I came to the realization that us living in houses that are separating us from nature, I, I always was disturbed when I was uh, living in Santa Fe and, and, and kind of like people came to visit, other US people came to visit and have been complaining that there were no air conditioning in Santa Fe. I'm like, yeah, uh, you can manage to draw and you have to be wise in closing windows and all that because, yeah, <laughs> we have Adobe houses here. Yes. So what's, what's, what's the take? Because we are, we are setting boundaries of us as humans with what nature is giving. I totally understand that you need AC when you're living in Arizona. I couldn't live it 110 in Fahrenheit, but um, in Santa Fe, it was something in between maximum 86, maybe 90 Fahrenheit. I think during the day, that's fine. And then at night, it goes down to, as you know, to kind of like 60, 65. So you, you work with a secret Yan rhythm. And, um, but we are not exposing ourselves to those experiences as literal they can be with just living with nature, you know? So it's very scary then to expose us to our inner nature, our inner truth. Uh, the question, who am I? You know? And then, who am I? Is that true? If we have uh, Brian Katie's work, is it true? How do you know it's true? Is it just a belief? And that's what the two discover your inner truth and, and transform and release what is not needed anymore from your belief sentences. And I can tell you over the last 15 years, I went more than once through all the water round and I'm always astonished what, what beliefs I can't let go after I have let go already a lot of other beliefs. <laughs> and I also am able to install new beliefs, you know, and that's a beauty. If you're taking time and that's what it needs, the water round takes time to experience, to be thrown in the water and learn to swim, not because someone tells you how to swim, but because you figure it out. Yeah. Because you figure it out. There's some, uh, there's um, a genius in the element that guides us, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we can be with what is, we can uh, uh, receive and learn. And I, you know, I, I think in part what I hear you saying is um, we're a very projective culture. Uh, we're forced in it in many ways. Who are you? What are you going to be? What do you do for a job? How, you, how do you make money? Where are you going this weekend? There's one of the things I remember most about Santa Fe living in New Mexico was that the, uh, the magic of the land called you out of yourself mm -hmm. and, and demanded with its beauty alone to the fire realm, I mean, the water realm, it's hard to let go. You know, in alchemy, they say this is where the 
old king dies, drowns, and the new is being reborn, there's a new spirit coming through. How hard it is to sit with another that seeming to seemingly drowning that's, <laughs> that's going through. Yes, and uh, I. I hope that our meeting is still on. I'm not sure, Kelly, if we just have lost our Let's connection. Are you back? Moment. Let's see. There we go. There we go. I'm, I'm sorry, Catherine. Uh, we're back. Sorry about Excellent. that. That's fine. I just wanted to say, uh, mm -hmm. you, you talked about the old king dying and the new element. And that's exactly where Monica comes into play. Uh, the the Katrin uh, was, uh, is uh, very much was and is uh, the logical moving forward, achieving the manager, the business girl that has no fear in anything and the Monica is more the gypsy that experiences that dreams into the world that goes with the flow that yeah says guess it was, it was. <laughs> and I love those tools and and how they play and uh, it was not always like that um, I'm talking now on a perspective from 2018 uh, after 15 years of transforming self, uh, moving continents, um, giving up twice uh, a career that was magnific magnificent because I just was called to do different. And I gave it all in to the spiritual path of uh, uh, merging shamanic aspects with business consultancy because I do feel that we have lost the connection connection of the heart, the connection of the beings, the connection of what there is. And it's important for me to, to bring that nurturing aspects of all the elements of the nurturing of when you know who you are and what feels right, you have such a different vigor and zest in walking through life which doesn't matter on how much money you earn or how much people are praising your name because you know it's your truth. Yeah. Can you speak to the, the, that wisdom of that connection that uh, some would call it Gaian wisdom or Panchamama or Mother Earth. Just yesterday I talked um, with someone how to connect to a tree. Mm. And I said, you just don't walk up to a tree and hug the tree. <laughs> of course you can, but that's not connecting to the tree. That's hugging a tree. It's like when some stranger walks on, <laughs> on any street and comes to you and says, I want to hug you. <laughs> Do <Yeah>. I know? Handshake <laughs> <laughs> first. Yes. So <laughs> it all starts with being able to connect to yourself, which if we want to use an organ, it's it's not the solar plexus, which is the inner light and the inner vigor. It's actually your inner heart. It's the heart in the heart. It's kind of like the heart is the physical thing, but the heart has an electromagnetic field, which is different from the rest of the body. And if you're able to connect to that electromagnetic heart and you come at peace with that connection, then you are in your inner truth. And that's something else than being centered, honestly. Um, centered is kind of like the uh, a first step 
that will allow you to come later on to being able to connect to your heart. And there is this, in, 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 uh, through my um, meditation practice with Zen, um, uh, we talk about a calm heart. Um, and a, a calm heart doesn't mean that we don't feel emotions, but it, it means that we have the ability to acknowledge the emotions for them being there and not yet being carried away. And that, that's where I, I hold that inner truth because there is no voice and no critic and no, is it it or is it not? It's just, it goes to the level of it is. And it, it reminds me, I don't know if you have had those, those little uh, pictures or comics, uh, but we had that in, in, in Switzerland. It's, it's from a little sketchy lady with a sketchy boy. They are both not wearing clothes mm -hmm. and it, it has to cover love is like bringing her flowers and then you see the little guy with one flower to bring it to her and that statement about love is i only understood like three years ago before that i thought love is no love is something but love is is everything and when you come to the understanding about yourself with that statement that I am and all that is enough. I am. And this is enough as a statement, then you reach your inner truth. And what comes through if you were to tell somebody who is either unfamiliar with this state of this depth of heart centeredness or was, um, uh, averse to it was maybe scared of mm -hmm. touching that depth what what would you say from being centered in this moment in this heart wisdom um, most of the time the reason that blocks is a fear and if they are able to address, to understand what they are afraid of, like I was afraid to feel, but then the question is, what, what are you afraid of that will happen when you start to feel? Uh -huh. And you are uh, not conceptualized, but you are going into the experience, you know? And why does that matter? You know, so kind of like, but if I feel I, I may start to be emotional. Yeah. So, and yeah, then other people will judge me mm -hmm. and <laughs> then I lose my social status or I'm seen like a, like a, like I don't know what, or I say like, and <laughs> so by talking about it, you know, and sometimes to talk about our fears allows us to connect with ourselves, because that, that's, that's the truth. We normally don't dare to speak because we are afraid of being judged. But it's exactly seeing those inner truths that allows you to go deeper into who you are, into your emotional nature, and, and recognizing what nurtures you and, that, that's, and what, what's not nurturing you. You know, full stop. Yeah. Um, but we have concepts of being superficially polished, glossy, uh, shiny, mm. functioning all the time. And I tell you, honestly, when you are embarking on water, there are days that are you, you're, you're not polished. <laughs> mm -hmm. There are the bad hair days on your soul, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's an interesting um, uh, juxtaposition. And I, you know, in the work, we talk of um, the medicine and, and the, the medicine being derived from the poison. 
and if one of at least one of the poisons of our culture is that um, we are uh, designed to be fearful of emotions because it seems to re reveal something inductive and feminine and messy about our nature, which will not hold this polished uh, persona together. There is medicine in that poison, that there's medicine. And, you know, I look and I see the rise of the empath. I mean, the memes popping up around, are you an empath or are just growing exponentially? And like most things, like the human body, when it's under attack, uh, the immune system's very good at providing what is needed, that there is a, a, a in a sense, the the rise of the empath, the rise of shamanic consciousness itself is the the universal bodies or the earthly bodies way of of bringing us back into um, our sanity and our as humans as mm -hmm. heart centered humans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you work with Robert Diltz and heart centered uh, neurolinguistic programming. You work in your. You work in consulting. You you have your own consulting. You you consider yourself a biz shaman, which I absolutely love. And in fact, I think that was one of the key features when I saw you there. I'm like, well, I saw you, and I'm like, she's amazing. She's a powerful. <laughs> woman. I knew that. But then when I saw business shaman, I was like, biz shaman. I was like, well, she also has chutzpah. She has courage to uh, to own. Um, this path, there is um, a coming to a, a coming to understand what it is that um, is shamanic in our culture world. What is it, what does it mean to to really own the power of our our emotional feminine nature? And you know, I see that we have this empathic medicine coming through, and. You know, I the the joy I have, and but also the wonderment I have, and seeing you being able to really hold both fields of this very strong and solid and together woman, and also this very emotional woman. I mean, when we you and I have talks, and to see you drop into that, sometimes it it almost uh, throws me off. I'm like, oh wait a minute, she's actually listening. <laughs> she actually heard me, and I think it reached her heart. And I think there's there's in the, in her response to a very uh, real life, every, worldly uh, uh, insight. She is coming at it from a place of having heard me and seen me. And you know, I, it's still business, right? It's still doing the work, but we're doing it. You're doing it in a very powerful way that models something I think our future is dependent on. Mm, thank you. Um, it certainly is a, is a dance of um, staying connected and it demands uh, the practice of being connected and listening and tuning in and not letting uh, the eagerness and the concept thoughts and the mind uh, do its thing. The spirits told me, my mind is not the reason why I'm here. Hmm. It's, it's like a nice accessory. <laughs> but, uh, don't be overly proud about that sunglass, you know. <laughs> Something else is more important. And uh, I come to terms with it and I appreciate it. And honestly, the more I do it, the easier it gets, the more a matter of fact that approach is without thinking anymore. It, it just comes, you know? And I have cultivated uh, an analytical approach uh, for more than 30 years in my life. And that always is part of who I am. And I rediscovered all the emotional traits and the contact uh, with the spirits and spirits want to work with me and give me some challenging tasks and i'm saying hey guys uh, pff, um okay and they said you can do it uh, because you have all that experience you bring that all to the plate you have been in management you talked to government officials you worked internationally um bring it 
to the domain and uh, don't be fussy about it be matter of facty about it and that that's where it comes like calling it bis shaman you know be i said as kind of like the the new age abbreviation of business um, to say yes it's ancient and it's it's old it's it's merging it's not neither nor it is an end it's this gener generative field that we are creating and and in the in the work that i do with the conscious leadership or next generation entrepreneur collective intelligence or now with uh, generative coaching uh, a, a consulting together with robert and our leadership team uh, we want to bring that forward that the wisdom is not within self the wisdom is in the crowd and you need to be able to access it's just that my crowd are not only people <laughs> my, my crowd are a little bit more from the metaphysical world from the nature world uh, the trees the stones the gems the, the elements and then the spirits the power animals the spiritual guide teachers the angelic teachers the goddesses and gods uh, whoever shows up at the at my doorstep is more than welcome i don't have a set frame of i work in this cultural shamanistic or this i'm just saying like everyone who has my phone number can call me and spirits use that as well it's a powerful medicine that you have and it's something that many of us in the um the realms of other worlds and the shamanic and that being our very uh, uh, home in which we come into this world, uh, we seek those who can help us balance the earth and the air. Uh, we tend to have the right brain, fire, and water in hand, and and far too much for many, uh, if as concerned. But what we're looking for are leaders and support in these other realms to help us to find that balance. And I personally, and, and on behalf of Solab, am, uh, as I've said many times, infinitely grateful um, that there are Catherine Weisses in the world who have taken the, that have the courage, I would say, to be able to dive into the unknown realms that are very frightening to one who has developed themselves so fully in these other realms. And I know I speak for many who are endeavoring to bring their medicine to the world, but don't know how to evolve it into the world in a good way, mm -hmm. in a way that will reach the people that they need to reach. And as you know, this is the, the, the whole ethos of Soul Lab. How do we come together in mutual support at this time in human history to quicken that process so each one of us can live into and through that divine directive that we've been given without having to discard it at eight years old, without having to deny it at 35? How do we own our power yet do it in a way that we are mutually supportive and part of a, a, a worldwide tribe, if you will, of those that see the need and see where they can be of support. So I would, I would love it if you were to give us um, some, uh, some <laughs> I would say a Catherine Weiss invitation as you just did. Um, what, how can they reach you? And I want them to know, we, we haven't really gotten into your book. Now, when we go to the, we're going to talk for all of you listening, we're going to go into a deep dive uh, on Patreon, the solab.com slash, I mean, patreon.com slash solab. We're going to go in a deep dive with Catherine because I'm itching to ask more questions. <laughs> and, but for now, those who are listening on the Solab group and on the Solab page, how can they reach you? Uh, what? Uh, how can they find your book? Uh, repeat the name if you would. I just want them to know uh, Catherine Weiss. Yeah, so um, the book title is Dare to Trust. The subtitle Spirits at Work, it, it has the bird <laughs> that dives into the water as the cover when you see it. So it's not all those other belletristic books <laughs> um, that you find under that title. You can buy it on Amazon. It's in English it's, uh, as an ebook or 
soft or hardcover. Um, then I have I have the two websites. Uh, one is uh, bizshaman.com, so b i z shaman.com, uh, and the other one is my company that I have since 2004, which is Beachtig, uh, which is a very very nice. Um, uh, if you pronounce it in English, it's kind of like beach tick. Or, so I always said it's kind of like being at the beach with a tick Swissness. Um, <laughs> Uh, Beachtig is a Swiss German word for paying attention and being aware. Mm. Um, so yeah, um, you find me on LinkedIn um, and uh, electronically, and then you you see there are there are the email addresses and phone numbers are are on the websites or through LinkedIn. It's the it's the easiest. Um, yeah. And you will certainly find Catherine Weiss, much to our pleasure, uh, here at Soul Lab. She is joining forces as our business strategist and and confidant and 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 uh, guide and supporter. It's been uh, it's been an incredible journey so far, and we look forward to so much more. We're going to be getting together in uh, Santa Cruz in August, meeting with our developer, Sunil Shah, uh, building the, the web development, and Renu Vora doing the front end. And so our team is going to get together, and Catherine is an integral part of that. So you can also find her here. She's, uh, you know, all the things as Solab starts looking more and more uh, the form that it needs to be to support what we're building, uh, you will see um, inherently Catherine Weiss's wisdom and her divine hand involved in all of this. So uh, we thank you for bringing this, this <laughs> earthy wisdom and this deep emotional connection and just heart-centeredness. Um, su such an extraordinary um, being that you are. I'm so glad uh, you've made it through as we are glad all of you have made it through. I know there are many of you going through some phase where all every element has its gauntlet. There's none that is more, um, more um, challenging than the next. We know that and we want to provide a place for all of us to come together and mutually support each other in this sort of open source soulware. Yeah sort of way and yeah. Catherine will make sure that we do it in a good way <laughs> yes and it's just um, um i i know how it felt uh end 2003 beginning 2004 there were days i woke up and i felt my little boat is on the top of the wave and i see a little bit where the ocean is and maybe some shores and then there were days that I felt I'm in the most biggest thunderstorm with my little boat and the ocean of despair and not knowing. And the only thing that kept me alive is an innate thing, which is breathing. I said like, okay, uh, maybe I just go back to sleep and breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think too much. And, and, uh, and, did what was good for me, what felt nurturing for me at, on those days, you know, and we never know when we see the shore and that happens to every time we, we, we can be in an emotional turmoil and when we are in the midst of the emotional turmoil, we think there is no solution. But if we have the ability to someone to share that with someone that, that can give us the trust that yes, it is like it is. And there are times where it is different. That can give us some guidance and this is what i love with soul lab you know with the process to make it clear that there are those phases to make it clear that each of the phase is necessary to get through the development of a holistic and and sound and sustainable self-development i see a lot of people who want to get shortcuts in self-development and that is not sustainable and and with this alchemic approach of reiterations and going deeper and deeper each time you, you go through those 12 phases, it really allows you to come to the point of, I have been here already, this time it's different, but yet it's a water challenge. I recognize that now. And it takes away the heaviness of not knowing and giving a trust that we are indeed in a process and it's moving forward. Well said. Wow. It's so nice to hear it. And in, in, in your uh, way of putting it is um, that is 
absolutely the spirit of it. And we invite all of you to uh, connect with Catherine, um, especially those that are um, in their little boats navigating uh, the waters of, of this emotional time we're all in and reaching out to all the other members and to those that you know that are around you. Uh, the helpers are all around us and uh, be willing to reach out to gain the support that you need. This is the time for the empath to rise. This is a time where you are needed in this world. There is no time that I can remember in my uh, history of being alive on this planet that our way of being, uh, the gifts we bring to this world are so in demand and so needed. And this is the time where we are invited we're in the cloud of our isolated little worlds, our, our offices and, you know, little holes. And, and, and to um, connect, to, be a, to allow yourself to be um, part of a circle of beings that get you, that support you in all of the elemental phases of transformation. Where you are now is exactly where you need to be. When we come together in a good way, magic happens. And our world um, has brought us here for this. I think we're, uh, we're right on time for this. So, Catherine, thank you so much. And um, this has really been a pleasure. I can't wait to dive deeper with you uh, on Patreon. And for everyone listening, uh, thank you for all the shares on Soul Lab. Uh, please join us if you haven't on Patreon, where we can bring more guided journeys and bring more meditations and bring more resources and behind the scenes insights into um, all of our processes of development. Uh, so thank you all for joining us and uh, stay tuned and join us for the. Thank you, Catherine. More than welcome. Talk to you soon.